And good evening. evening. And welcome to worship. It's always good to to gather in in a time of worship at the close of a day. I I love the Saturday evening service uh, as we just reflect back on this day, this uh, week that we've had, and all the places where we've seen uh, our loving and Heavenly Father show up uh, in our lives, uh, connecting us, reminding us, loving us, forgiving us. And so maybe just take a moment as we gather now for worship, uh, just to, to recall all the ways that our, our wonderful uh, Heavenly Father has blessed us this day in this past week. It is a blessing to be gathered in worship tonight. I invite you to please stand as you are comfortable for our call to worship. God, you call each of us to witness and serve, and we answer. Here we are, Lord. You have seen us and known us from the beginning. Jesus, you call each of us to follow you, and we answer. Here we are, Lord. You have called us to this place. Holy Spirit, you call each of us to worship you this day, and we answer. Here we are, Lord. Inspire our hearts with courage and joy to serve and follow you.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. And let us pray. Beloved God, you know us inside and out, and you still call us to serve you. Empower us to listen for and to hear your call. Empower us to answer your call with, Here I am, Lord. Empower us to follow you when you call us through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Once again, good evening and welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Tim Nybron. I want to welcome you along with Pastor Aaron Morris and Pastor Wyatt Lind, our pastoral staff. Uh, we welcome you. Uh, if you are a guest with us tonight, if this is your first time worshiping here at Resurrection, welcome. We're delighted that you're here. Please come and worship with us again real soon. For our guest tonight, uh, there's those green cards in the seat back in front of you. They say guest connection on them. If you would be so kind to fill one of those out, Again, it gives a chance to welcome you, to know you, and to invite you to come worship with us again. Uh, just place that green card after it's uh, filled out in the offering basket, and uh, we look forward to greeting you after our worship out on the patio. We are now in the season of epiphany and uh, the season of light, and certainly uh, we remind of Emmanuel, God with us, and that Jesus has come, the light of the world, the light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So my prayer for each one of us is that we sense and we feel that light here tonight, that Christ is here. And again, uh, we welcome you uh, uh, to uh, greet one another after worship. If you don't know someone, again, please uh, reach out your hand, welcome them tonight, and invite them to come to worship with us again. We'll now have our first reading from the book of 1 Samuel. The first reading, 1 Samuel chapter 3. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am. And ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time. And he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from Psalm 139, and please read responsibly. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You search out my path and my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. You hem me in, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was being made in secret, 
intricately woven in the depths of the earth. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! The word of the Lord. According to John, the first chapter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Please be seated. Seeing is believing. You've heard that statement before, haven't you? Seeing is believing, and there's truth to that. Several years ago, a member of the church that I was serving at the time invited me to go on a seven-day Boundary Waters canoe adventure. Seven days of canoeing, portaging, camping, and fishing. Have any of you ever experienced a canoe adventure up in the Boundary Waters or maybe up into the Quetico of Canada? There are over 3,000 lakes in that area, and it's one of the most remote places in all of North America. And I gotta tell you, it was absolutely incredible, that trip. The rugged beauty, the towering rock cliffs, the majestic waterfalls, the virgin pine forest. Each late afternoon, we would throw our, our fishing lines into the water within what seemed like just two seconds we'd have a fish hooked. I remember one night, we caught 10 beautiful walleye, and we ate like kings that night. And I remember when I returned home, talking with one of my friends and telling him, Rip, you wouldn't believe how beautiful and how pristine the lakes are. You wouldn't believe how many fish we caught. You've got to experience this. You've got to go to the Boundary Waters sometime in the future. You've got to see this. Well, five years later, Rick did. And he was able to see for himself what my description could not do. To picture, to experience the beauty of the boundary waters. The adage is true. Seeing is believing. But this happens all the time in our lives, doesn't it? I mean, if we went around this sanctuary here this evening, there would be countless stories of where once we doubted. But then we saw with our own eyes, and we came to believe. When Jesus was an unknown preacher, traveling around the region of Galilee, he happened upon a young man named Philip. Follow me. Jesus called out to Philip, and Philip did. But first he went and he found his friend Nathanael. We found the Messiah. He's a man named Jesus of Nazareth. 
But Nathaniel was not impressed. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Now notice, Philip did not try to convince his friend. He didn't try to describe Jesus or to tell stories about Jesus. He didn't provide a list of Jesus' references and credentials. Philip simply said, come and see. Come and see. And that invitation changed Nathaniel's life forever. Come and see. That is the greatest invitation in all the world. Come and see your new granddaughter, right? Come and see the majestic Catalina Mountains of Southern Arizona. Come and see the beautiful desert landscape. Come and see the savior of the world. Come and see. Those are the very same words that we continue to use to invite people to church here in the 21st century. Come and see. But the problem is, I think, friends, is that we typically invite people to come and to see things other than Jesus. Come and see our sanctuary. Come and see our, our church's beautiful stained glass windows. Come and see our stunningly handsome pastor. You know, not the two younger ones, right? The oldest one, the one that's now sporting that, that gray beard of his. <laughs> Come and see our choirs. Come and see our, our cute children. And the problem with those invitations is that none of them have the capacity to change a person's life. In a world where bigger and better things are always just around the corner, people will not be convicted by stained glass windows or by grand organs or precious children, or beautiful buildings, or handsome pastors, for that matter. This is not what the church has to offer. No, all we really have to offer is the glimpse of the Savior, Jesus Christ. But that attraction doesn't seem to be enough. So we have to up the ante. Beautiful people, beautiful music, beautiful preaching, beautiful buildings, beautiful things, oh yeah and also Jesus. You know, years ago, I remember visiting Old Faithful Geyser up in Yellowstone National Park and having dinner in the lodge. And everyone who was dining that night, they watched the digital clock that was up on the wall as it ticked down the minutes until the next big eruption of Old Faithful. And when the clock reached 30 seconds to go, everyone left their tables and they rushed over the windows overlooking the geyser. And when the Old Faithful finally erupted, all the tourists were ooing and eyeing. And I remember looking back into the dining hall and seeing the waitresses, the busboys, were using this time to clear the tables, their dirty dishes, gathering all the garbage. You see, they had become so familiar with this spectacular event, this indescribable eruption, that it no longer impressed them. It no longer held their interest. And I wonder if that isn't also true of the church today. Jesus, the Savior of the world, the creator of the universe, the light that shines in the darkness, the very Son of God who came into our world to die on the cross so that we might have eternal life. And he, this one in whose name we gather, has become to us oh so very boring. And the church has helped make him boring, right? Right? Stale sermons, stale music, stale coffee, stale conversations about weather and sports. But folks, they are not life-changing. And I know that that's not true in this church, our church. But I fear it's common in so much of our world today. You know, like rock bands, right, that always employ a, a warm-up group. So does the church. Only I think in the church's case, we often have Jesus. We have Jesus as the warm-up group. The main event, you know, is the building or the liturgy, the anthem, the preacher's sermon, the donuts holes after worship. And we're no longer impressed by what Jesus has done to save us. So we have to spice the story up a bit with our own sideshow. 
You know, in times of prosperity, when life is a party and people are dabbling in all sorts of exciting things, maybe that's what we think is necessary, right? Fluff, pizzazz. But when times are hard, when the challenges of this life have knocked us down and we don't know if we can get back up again, people need more than a sideshow. They need to hear about a God who has the power to change the world. They need to know that there is a community, a community called Resurrection Lutheran Church, where people do not weep alone, or worship alone, or serve alone. And encouragement and prayer is a precious gift. You see, we need to extend that invitation once again. Come and see. Come and see Jesus at work. Come and hear how God has touched our lives. Come and know that there is a God who knows your name. And one more thing. We cannot invite people to come and see if we ourselves are not coming and seeing on a regular basis. We need to be a people of worship, a people of learning, people of serving. You know, my singular role, my task, my calling as your senior pastor, and this goes for Pastor Aaron and Pastor Wyatt, is that all of you might see Jesus. And this is my prayer for 2024, that we would gather here each Saturday evening or Sunday morning to see Jesus. The pastors will do our best to be faithful to that calling. Preachers will preach about Jesus. Choirs will sing about Jesus. The teachers will teach about Jesus. And we will clearly see the God who is our hope and our life. This is no time for fluff, especially in this world of ours today. This is no time for pizzazz. This is a time to come face to face with the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ your Savior. You know, in these first couple of weeks of January, we've welcomed in our worship two of the organizations that Resurrection supports. Last week, I remember Pastor Rebecca Boardman from the University of Arizona Campus Ministry was with us, and she shared what incredible ministry is happening with college students right in our backyard. Come and see. And tonight... We are blessed to have Josh Krabs with us from Casas Pro Cristo. And, as, and many of you know, this past year, we have built three houses with Casas Pro Cristo in areas just south of Juarez, Mexico. And we've sent over 30 missionaries and builders from Resurrection. I was able to go last February, and what a transformative experience it was. And we're going again this coming February. So mark your calendars. And I'd like to invite up Josh at this time. Josh, come on up. And welcome. We welcome Josh to Resurrection. All right. I want to, first of all, I want to thank Pastor Tim. Thank you so much for allowing me to share just a little bit about the ministry. Um, good news, guys. He said I had 45 minutes. So I hope you are excited because we got a lot to talk about. Um, but... Again, my name is Josh Krabs. I'm a missionary servant with Casas Por Cristo. Casas Por Cristo means Houses for Christ. We're a short-term missions organization working in Juarez, Mexico, Acuna, Mexico, Guatemala, the Dominican, and Honduras. And what does short-term missions mean? It means we take groups from churches, just like Resurrection, and um, we take you guys across the border. Uh, Resurrection has done three houses in Juarez in the last year. And we built a house for a family living in dire poverty. And we do that. This is a completed house back here with the group, and uh, my family's there as well. And we take you in a span of three days, and we build a house from start to finish, from pouring the floor to sheetrocking and insulation to putting an electrical. And why do we build houses? We build houses because in 1993, the Bell family was a missionary family working in Juarez, Mexico. And they said, they were talking with some Mexican pastors at that time, and they said, how can we help your families know more about Jesus? How can we help share the gospel, the good news? And those pastors came back to them, and they said, our families, they can't. They don't know how to feel like Jesus loves them, like they are valued and loved when they live in such dire poverty. The average family we build for across all locations 
lives on $75 a week. That's not very much money. 75 US dollars a week. Um, I'm actually gonna have you guys skip two slides real quick for me in the back. I want you guys to see this. In February, we're going down there, we're voting for Arturo and his family. This family right here. Can you guys see what's behind him? The plywood, the barbed wire, the door that is off the hinges. These are the common, li common living conditions of the families that we go serve. And so Casa Sport Cristo exists for two things, two reasons. One, to build and serve, to take care of the largest tangible need this family will ever have. But secondly, and more importantly, is to partner them with a pastor in a local church that lives in country. Every family that Casas builds for, 6,700 houses since 1993, 260 houses last year, every one of those families got partnered with a local pastor. They turn in applications of pastors that we work with in each country, each location. They are the only ones who are allowed to receive the applications. They are the only ones who are allowed to turn them in. And everything we do as an organization points back to them. Because long before you guys come, there's a pastor ministering to this family. And long after you guys come, or long after you guys leave, that pastor is there sharing the good news of Jesus. So those are the two reasons we exist, to build and serve and to open the door for the local church to share the good news of Jesus, to share the good news of the gospel. You know, because our goal is two, twofold, to transform their physical life through giving them adequate housing and to transform their life spiritually by connecting them with a the church who is going to do that. You know, for me, I started with Casas Por Cristo when I was 14 years old. I was just a kid, just a baby. And the only reason I started is because my parents, they had a rule. They said, son, you're a bit of a knucklehead, so you love sports, and if you want to play sports in high school, you need to go on a mission trip with this church, with the church we go to. That was it. If you don't go on a mission trip, you can't play sports. So I was voluntold to go to Juarez, Mexico. And it changed my life. It was the first time um, I felt. We went down there, just right across the border. I could see El Paso from where we were at. And this was the first time I could feel God was real. And in three days, we built a house for a family. Come and see. Come and see the life change you can make. And so, I had the opportunity to go again when I was 18, and this time I wanted to go. And I went, and I loved it again. The tangibility of being the hands and feet of Christ were so impactful. To be able to take somebody's life, and in a span of three days, to change their life forever through adequate housing was incredible. And I didn't even understand the part of partnering with the gospel, the real meat and potatoes at that point. I just love the tangibility. And again, when I was 20, I got to go on, a, I, I did an internship with this ministry. And I, they sent me a book about a month before the internship with building plans. And let me tell you all, I didn't know what side of the hammer to hold. I think my mom gave me a left-handed hammer. Um, that's funny, right? I guess left-handed hammer. Um, and I'm flying down to El Paso, Texas to go lead teams in Juarez, Mexico, which wasn't scary at that point. And I'm studying these plans and looking at Spanish phrases. And I'm reading, ¿Dónde, es, dónde es estás de baño? What does that mean? Where is the bathroom? I don't know anything about doing this internship. They shouldn't have hired me. I'm not equipped to do this work. But let me tell you guys, God doesn't call the equipped. He equips the called. And I feel very strongly that each and every one of you here are called to serve, whether it's in Juarez, Mexico with Casas for Cristo, or at your local food pantry, or here at church. And I encourage you guys to do that. And I would love for each and every one of you to come on a trip with us at Casas for Cristo. And in those, they gave me three weeks of training. Back then we used to do two different style houses. They gave me three weeks of training. And on week number four, they're like, here's a map and a book go into Juarez, Mexico, and take 15 strangers with you and figure it out. Um, and through the grace of God, 11 homes were, I led 11 homes that summer, and they were all built 
And I, I truly believe that they're all still standing. <laughs> but that was 17 years ago. For the last 17 years, I've served at this ministry because I believe in it. I believe in the power and the work that God is doing through Casa Sport Freestyle. From 2008 to 2014, I served predominantly in Juarez, Mexico. In 2014, uh, my wife and I got married, and three months later, we moved to the Dominican Republic. And let me tell you guys, that was a challenge. I would not recommend getting married and then moving to a foreign country three months later. Um, definitely a lot of blending that went on. But we lived in the Dominican from 2015 to 2022. And what was so powerful and impactful was for us, we live in the community with the families we serve. The houses that we were built for, for my neighbors, for some of my friends, for people I went to church with. Less than a mile away from where we would live, we would build houses. And I love seeing Casas firsthand, to being part of the community and seeing the difference that these houses make generationally. Oftentimes, it's the first time anyone's had a cement floor in their life. It's the first time they've had a door that locks a roof that doesn't leak. And it has changed my life. And I want to encourage you to come on a trip with us and participate, if you are able, because it will change your life the same way. The impact is incredible. In 2022, my wife and I, I took a new position in the ministry, and we moved back to El Paso. And I started leading teams back in Mars again, where it all started. Kind of came full circle. And so, I just want to encourage you guys all. Resurrection's done three homes last year, which is cool. Three families have their forever home because of you guys. And we need two kinds of people. We need the people to come with us. We have a trip in February with a meeting that is... The 17th at 6.30, is that correct? The 17th at 6.30, please come, come attend that. And you look at me and you're like, oh, well, you, you, know, you're, you can do this, you're a construction worker. This is a no experience necessary. You, know, you just need a willing heart and God will take that and use that and shape that. And so we don't need you to have experience. We just want you to come build and serve and be the tangible hands and feet of Christ to create a life change. That family we saw up there before, if we could go back to that slide. This is Arturo. Arturo is the man in the middle with the hat. Arturo makes $111 a week. He provides for six people. This home we build is going to be 340 square feet. That's smaller than a two-car garage. But to them, it is a mansion and it is an opportunity for the local church to kick open the door to say, God loves you. God loves you because a group of strangers who you don't know, he sent them here to build you this home for free. Because like God's love is free for us, this gift of a home is free. And so the two kinds of people we need, we need people to come help us build and serve, to change people's lives for the Lord or Allow the Lord to work through us to change our lives is a better way to put that. To be a blessing to Arturo. And secondly, we need people to help pay for these homes. And if you're not able to come, Pastor Wyatt put a booklet out there in the patio. Please take one of those and see how he could help cover the cost of this house financially, which is roughly $11,000. Because you guys' generosity allows us to do this, allows us to build and serve, and to use this method to share the gospel to change families' lives. And so I just thank you again, and Pastor Tim especially, for resurrection, building three homes in 2022, or 2023. That is an incredible blessing. And thank you so much for your partnership with Casas for Cristo and allowing us to serve the people of Juarez, Mexico. So thank you, brother. Thanks. Thanks, Josh. And again, um, I did have the opportunity to, a year ago, a February trip to take, uh, uh, to go on that incredible opportunity and experience to, to go to just south of Juarez to, 
to, uh, to build two houses on that trip. And I know I'm surrounded by people who have, were on that trip as well. And again, Josh is going to be out on the patio after worship here tonight. Please stop at the, the table there. And I encourage the one, uh, people who have already been on a build to stick, if you can, stick around and just uh, maybe share with other people the joy and the wonderful experience that was. And, uh, and I'll be out there too as well. So again, Pastor Wyatt put together this wonderful little catalog that looks like this. Inside, there's opportunities to read more about Casas Pro Cristo. And then you'll see, you know, maybe my opportunity is not, I, I can't go with this year on this trip, but I, I can certainly purchase a door or I can purchase a window for the house. And you'll know everything is listed inside this little catalog. So please prayerfully consider that. Take one as you leave tonight. And again, come and see Come and see that the Lord is good. Amen. People of God, what is it we profess to be true? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And please be seated. Let us pray for God's blessing on the church, the world, and all of creation. Let us pray. Almighty God, encourage the ministry and mission of the church. Tonight we pray for the mission and ministry of Casas Pro Cristo. We thank you for the work that Josh and his family are doing in building homes and building lives for your precious children. Provide resources to this organization that will continue to bring hope and healing to communities. God of grace. Creating God, delight in the goodness of your creation. Heal areas of the world harmed by human greed. Restore those recovering from natural disaster. Certainly be with the people who live in areas across the United States that are facing blizzards, tornadoes, high winds, and other stormy weather. Protect our forests and waterways and all the creatures that live in them, God of grace. Peaceful God, bring peace among nations, especially between Israel and Palestine. Russia and Ukraine, God of grace. Receive our prayer. Caring God, hold in your care any who suffer and struggle. You who know our inner hearts, be present with any who are oppressed, victims of racism or cultural bias, and all who long for respite or restoration. 
especially those that we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. God of grace, trust in God who raised Jesus and will raise will also raise us in spirit and truth. We remember all who have died and are at peace among the saints, especially the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., whose faithful advocacy for peace and justice continues to embolden the church today. God of grace. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You are beautiful, my sweet, sweet song. You are beautiful, my sweet, sweet song. You are beautiful, my sweet, sweet song. I will sing again. You are so good to me, you heal my broken heart, you are my Father in heaven. You are so good to me, you heal my broken heart, you are my Father in heaven. You are beautiful, my sweet, sweet song. You are beautiful, my sweet, sweet song. You are beautiful, my sweet, sweet song. I will sing again. You ride upon the clouds. You lead me to the truth. You are the spirit inside me you ride upon the clouds you lead me to the truth you are the spirit inside me you are beautiful my sweet sweet song you are beautiful my sweet sweet song you are beautiful my sweet sweet song I will sing again. You are my strong melody. You are my dancing rhythm. You are my perfect rhyme. I will sing of you. You poured out all your blood, you died upon the cross, you are my Jesus who loves me. You poured out all your blood, you died upon the cross, you are my Jesus who loves me. You are beautiful, my sweet, sweet song. You are beautiful, my sweet, sweet song. You are beautiful, my sweet, sweet song. I will sing again. You are beautiful, my sweet, sweet song. You are beautiful, my sweet, sweet song. You are beautiful, my sweet, sweet song. I will sing again. You are my Father in heaven. You are the Spirit inside me. You are my Jesus who loves me.
invite you to please stand as you are comfortable. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Holy One, for all good things come from you. In bread and cup, you open heaven to us. Meet us at this table that we receive what we seek and follow your son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, creator of darkness and light, word of truth, wind sweeping over the waters. Amen. Let us confess our sin, the presence of God and of one another. God, our rock and refuge, we pour out our hearts before you. We have known you, but have not always loved you. We have wounded one another and sinned against you. We have not always recognized the Holy Spirit dwelling in each of us. Remember your covenant. Renew your creation. Restore us that we might proclaim your good news to all. Amen. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. God has spoken. The time of grace is now. In Jesus, the reign of God has come near. And by the authority of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are God's beloved. Amen. Amen. This time we invite those who are communing at your chair here this evening. You can take out your Holy Communion cup. We also welcome those who are worshiping with us online tonight. We invite you now to prepare your tables at home for Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and he gave thanks. And he broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And please be seated. We do invite the communion assistants to come forward at this time. Again, for those of you who are communing at your chair, those communing with us online, as you eat of the bread, this is the body of Christ given for you. And as you drink of the cup, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. For those of you coming forward for Holy Communion, ushers will direct you forward. We'll have two stations here at the front of the sanctuary. And again, at the first station, you'll receive a wafer of bread. Please hold on to it. And then step to the next station where you can dip that piece of bread into the chalice of red wine. There's also a portion of the chalice that is white grape juice. And here at Resurrection, we believe this is God's gift for all of God's children. So no matter your denominational background, you are welcome. God's gifts for God's people. The table is now set. So I invite you to come.
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Just a few ministry announcements here tonight. So you'll notice tucked in your bulletin, we have this week at Resurrection. It highlights our upcoming ministries and programs. Please take that home with you and check out what's happening. We'd love to have you participate. Again, uh, Josh from Casa Por Cristo will be out on the patio after worship this evening. Please stop by the table and ask any questions that you may have. I also want to encourage those maybe who have gone on the trip as well just to, to share your stories, your thoughts as well. Um, and maybe you even want to sign up for the trip that's coming up. The, the dates are February 23rd, 24th, and 25th. We're also going to go down, for those who can, a day early to, to pour the concrete for the, for the, the house. Um, and uh, there's an information, uh, information meeting coming up again. Uh, Josh had mentioned it this coming Wednesday evening, uh, January 17th, 6.30 start. 6.30 right here in the sanctuary. Uh, Clay, Clay Moeller has been just such a wonderful advocate and certainly supporter of this ministry. He was the one that sat with me, I don't know, it's a year and a half ago and said, I got a ministry that I'd love to have resurrection support and it has been a blessing. So thank you, Clay. So come, be a part of that meeting uh, this Wednesday night at 6.30 and please sign up. We'd love to know kind of how many missionaries we're having go in end of February um, by the, hopefully the end of this next week. And so if you can become and be a part of that, uh, please, please do so. Um, also grab a catalog that, again that Pastor Wyatt put together as you leave tonight if you'd like to financially support this ministry. The American Red Cross will be here on Tuesday, February 16th, uh, from 8 to, tw that's, that's January 16th. Um, Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, from 8 to 1.30. Reserve your time online today by visiting our website, www.orovalley.org. And then finally, Feed My Starving Children is Saturday, February 10th. Mark your calendars. It goes from 7.45 to around 10.30. We are looking for 250 people from Resurrection to be a part of this food packing event. How many of you have packed food before with Feed My Starving Children? It is a joy-filled event. Uh, get to uh, converse with those who you're working side by side with. And uh, it, the event is over at uh, Oro Valley Church of the Nazarene. Again, if you'd like to be a part of that uh, February 10th event, sign up on our website, www.orovalley.org, no later than January 16th. Please stand now for our benediction. God, whose names you, Christ who claims you, and the Holy Spirit who dwells in you, bless you and remain with you always. Amen. We join together now in our church's mission. Called by God's Spirit, we are to be the presence of Christ in our daily lives. 
so that others will follow him. And let us now go in peace. You are God's beloved. Thanks be to God. Thank you.